Good morning. We are doing another tea and tarot this morning. I'm really happy to be reading with my wonderful marigold tarot today. Here it is. You can get it out of the box. These sessions are a really fun way to connect with people in a time when I am not doing one-on-one -on -one client readings, not face-to-face -face anyway. Um, right now I am doing email and video readings with people, and I'm also doing these really fun online readings where I am opening the readings up to connect with the powers of whoever is out there in need of a reading for a bit of comfort, a bit of clarity, um, a bit of communication from the powers that are most closely aligned with you. And so I do three readings with three cards apiece, and I put the time codes in the description so you can skip to the different readings. And if you find one of these readings that really speaks to you, that really speaks to what you are experiencing right now, that's really awesome. And I do these any time I feel inspired to, when I really feel moved to. And so I hope that one of these readings will be meaningful to you. If you would like to connect with me for a personal reading about something that is on your mind, about something you are curious about or wanting to explore more in depth with more than just three cards or more than just a few minutes of time like on one of these videos, I certainly invite you to and all of my uh, social media accounts that will help you contact me are also in the description. So let's begin this morning. All right, let's begin the first reading. Okay, this is a very powerful reading for someone who is experiencing a very powerful moment, a very powerful time in their life. Um, they have arrived at a time when they are very aware of their personal power. They've experienced a power up, maybe unique in their entire lives. And they are aware of their personal ability to affect change like <laughs> like never before. And this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. They're aware of themselves, that like their identity, their body, their surroundings, their environment, everything about them and their place in the world is suddenly full of vitality in a way that it just has never occurred before. This is an intensely powerful time in their lives. This is an incredible power up moment that you have experienced recently and a very new chapter of your life has begun. So one of the difficulties of these power-up transition phases in life, when we uh, reach these new stages that we've never experienced before, when, when, the, when we have these evolutionary um, power-ups, so to speak, often 
they are accompanied by profound cutting away and there are many <laughs> there there can be many well-meaning people who who say oh this is a shedding of skin like a snake like a butterfly's chrysalis like uh taking out the karmic garbage. There, there will be so many people with lots and lots of trite phrases that honestly will probably bug the hell out of you and will never quite seem to fully, adequately describe what you are experiencing. And nor could it, nor, nor could it possibly because everyone's experience of that shedding of an old life will be very different. It has to happen. It needs to happen. These two experiences are not separate. They are the same thing. So as you are experiencing this immense new wonder that suddenly you are seeing colors that you didn't even know existed, um, you will be clawing yourself out of the grave that the universe has buried you in. And it sucks. However, then you get to go and be the Queen of Wands, who is an absolute badass. The Queen of Wands is someone who knows things and can do things and can get things done. And yeah, the Queen of Wands is not a bad person to be, not by any means at all. So, um, there will be a prolonged period of, of suckage, and I'm, I'm very sorry for that. And um, you, you have a lot to look forward to, um, but a lot of the knowledge that the, Queen of, that the Queen of Wands has is knowledge about just how much things actually suck. And um, but um, it's knowledge you have will have won honestly. But it is a very strong position to end up in. And it is an indication that you will successfully come out of this out of this um, transformational process too. So that that's that's a very positive note to end on. All right, let's do the second reading. Interesting. We are getting a lot of majors and a lot of court cards from this deck today. So people are getting some very strong readings, like strongly worded, very um, potent messages from their aligned powers. So let's see here. The Hanged Man 
can refer to several different things. The way that I often read The Hanged Man is about gaining perspective through inner wisdom, um, distilling experience into wisdom that one uses to guide personal growth and development. So when the hanged man is correctly positioned, or correctly, incorrectly, when the hanged man is in the upright position like this, um, so that the figure is facing downward when the feet is in the air and the, and the head is um, toward the ground, um, because this is an inverted figure in an upright card. It, it's, it's a little backwards, it's a little upside down. Um, then it is someone who is taking time to adequately reflect on wisdom both in terms of taking the right amount of time and doing the right kind of work to reflect on wisdom and come to the correct conclusions. When the card is positioned upside down, when the card is reversed, and so the figure is in the opposite, the, the, the incorrect position, so to speak, then the process is disturbed or disrupted in some way. So the process of of distilling that, that personal wisdom and experience is being rushed along, it is being resisted, not the right time is being spent, too much time is being spent, or it is being somehow interfered with. In, in some way. I, I find that's less the case and usually it's much more the case that that the individual in question is not paying attention to the right things or resisting the process. I know actually I don't want to listen to the, the voice of my experiences and I keep wanting to make the same mistakes over and over again and I don't want to take time to reflect on my experiences and gain the appropriate wisdom from them. Um, so, you, the, the person or people who this reading feels most fitting for, there could be a few different things going on here. You could be resisting listening to that inner voice that is telling you to listen to your experiences and gain wisdom from them and not make the same mistakes again or not repeat um, ill-chosen courses of action again. You could be spending too much time thinking, like thinking about past mistakes, thinking about um, future choices, thinking about who you are and how you fit in this grand universe. And all of these things are very, very important and worthwhile to think about. But if that's all you think about, then you kind of end up in this closed loop. And you need more information, you need more experience. And so you have to kind of stop being the hanged man and start doing more. Stop being in this suspended state and begin acting. So depending on your circumstances, you can select, I think, which meaning feels best. And this is why I kind of think this reading has to do with more than, or this is kind of why I think this reading is speaking to more than one person, or even, dare I say, a, a person with multiples, like um, a person who hosts more than one spirit in them. Because I am not getting a feeling 
of one clear meaning with this card, and that's kind of unusual with these readings that I do. Usually when I do these readings, when I just kind of say, okay, what power, what energy, what, what current of information wishes to speak through these readings, usually the information comes pretty cleanly and, and pretty clearly, I, I guess I should say. Um, but I don't get a single aspect of this card. So let's kind of put a pin in this and say that whoever this is meant for is probably going to know exactly what is meant for this. It may not be important for me to know because I'm just the reader. I'm just here to convey the information. I don't need to know any of this. So, okay, let's move on to temperance. Now, reverse temperance, I think, very possibly has a lot to do, well, I mean, not just in terms of this reading, but in, in a general tarot sort of way. Um, reverse temperance, I think, has a lot to do with a reversed hanged man, and I'll tell you why after I sip my tea. All right. So, temperance upright has a lot of balance, has a lot of poise, has a lot of careful application of strength and skill. Reversed, there can be a lot of stagnation. There can also be, I think, a lot of anger and a lot of irritability. But in this case, the sensation that I'm getting very specifically is stagnation. And so I think that probably ties into that aspect of the hanged man in terms of this reading. Like, well, we really can't break out of this state in order to move on into something different. We're, we're stuck a little bit in, oh, how to say it? Um, reflecting a lot on our experiences and thoughts without being really sure how to act upon what we're thinking about and how we're feeling. Um, so there's a, I, I do get a very strong sensation of stagnation here and just like, uh, not even necessarily depression or ennui or anything like that, but just like everything has ground to a halt. Over here, we have the Queen of Rings, which in this deck is the Queen of Pentacles, which is a very interesting card to end this reading on, especially since there is not a strong narrative structure or even a strong, like, this happened, then this happened, and now this. It's just a sensation over here, a sensation of stagnation and interiority that can't end. So I don't even know if this is necessarily a different person. Often court cards are people and interpersonal dynamics. So the, traditionally, the Queen of Pentacles is someone organized, someone um, go-getting, someone maybe even community-oriented who um, takes on a leadership and organizational role um, not necessarily a boss in the sense that they uh, tell people what to do, but they are a force for organizational good. They can help people get things done. So maybe this is a person who you can turn to to say, I need some help breaking out of stagnation. And they are the person to say, oh, I have some resources for you. I can help you make a list. I can help you sort your recycling. You know, that's that kind of person. The mom friend, if you wish to use those terms. Um, this might be you on good days. This might be your actual mother, if you have that kind of person, you know, that kind of parental figure. This might be just the, the stereotypical mom friend. 
Um, this might be a helpful therapist. This might be a life coach. This might be, um, I don't know, pick someone. Like, um, this might be someone you have been thinking about reaching out to, but haven't. Maybe you could. Maybe you could. I know it's hard. I know it's very hard sometimes, but they are there. They have a lot of good mom energy, good organizational energy, good friend energy, good therapist energy. Like they got it and they can help you. So this is someone you can turn to, even if you haven't quite remembered or identified exactly who this person is, there is someone who can help you and you can turn to them to help you break out of some of this that you are experiencing right now. And this is not like a small time experience either. These are majors. These are major cards. These are in the major arcana. So this is some big time stuff you are dealing with, you know, and so don't think that just because you haven't been able to have success at changing what is what what you are experiencing um that you haven't been trying you know i think you have tried i think you have tried the tools and the skills that have very probably worked for you in the past but you are experiencing something uh significant right now so don't be afraid to talk to someone there is someone who can help you, and very possibly multiple someones, but they are embodied by a singular figure with extremely good organizational and just like getting stuff done vibes. And that is the end of this reading. Thank you. All right, let us do one more reading together. And once again, if you would like a private reading with me via email or a video reading like one of these, then uh, you are free to contact me. I specialize in a lot of spiritual readings, a lot of love and relational readings, pretty much anything you can think of, I can probably help you with. And if I can't, I can help you find someone who can. Let's begin. So here we have the Five of Pentacles, followed by Judgment and the Six of Wands. So as I've talked about in some of my previous videos, fives are junctions between the early parts of a suit and the later parts of a suit. And in Pentacles, we're dealing a lot with issues of material concern. Finances are usually the stereotypical meaning attributed to pentacles, but it's not just finances. We're also talking about home life. We're talking about uh, feelings of stability and security and kind of one's groundedness in the world. So right now, you are not feeling intensely grounded. You're dealing with discomfort and a discontent with where you are in life. Things are not what you thought they would be, or rather, 
in some ways, they're exactly what you wanted to be in, in the sense that, okay, you've made some choices and those choices have had some consequences and those consequences have landed you here. And here is not what you wanted. And yet you made the choices you wanted to make. And so you're kind of sitting with that and thinking, well, yeah, okay, I made the choices I wanted to make. And so you're kind of feeling like, well, I have no one to blame for, but myself, but that's not a really happy thought right now. And so this is not a really comfortable time for you. And you're kind of not sure what to do with these thoughts and feelings. And it's not, it's not great right now. It's probably not terrible, but also I hesitate to to tell you how terrible or not terrible your life is. Like, that's that's up to you. But um, I do get the distinct feeling that, that things feel kind of, kind of, kind of unpleasant right now. And, um, and I'm sorry, that, that kind of sucks. That's, yeah. Yeah, okay. So next, we have judgment. So... Rarely do people really have a defining moment in their life when they get to choose, do I want to continue on the path of the life I have or do I want to have something else? You are going to get to have that kind of choice. And that's kind of remarkable. I can't tell you what that choice is going to be. And I can't tell you what you are going to choose. But there is going to be a moment, a scenario, a situation in your life, in the foreseeable, kind of imaginable future, when you are going to be confronted with the reality of your life as it is. And that's kind of heavy. Not a lot of people are going to get that. You do. It's going to work out okay. Like, you're, you're going to be okay. The Six of Wands is a very fortunate card. It's a very happy card. It is a card of celebration, of uh, goodwill, of thanksgiving, of, of homecoming in a way, of, of good things, of good outcomes, of, of having come through a very trying time and, and celebrating it, and celebrating not being in those difficult times anymore. So... Yeah, things are unpleasant now. Things, in a way, are not going to be easier in the sense that they are going to get more complicated. I don't, I don't know for sure if they are going to get worse. They will be more complicated. And then there's going to be this very lovely happy ending. And that's kind of lovely. So I wish you the very best. Keep, keep this outcome in mind. Keep this happiness in mind over here. And good luck. Thank you all again. My battery is very nearly dead. My tea is almost cold. Thank you.